ready to start my freeze and fuse ornament. It occurred to me that this shape and size of ornament, there are a couple other things I would really like to put on it. And so this one is a sketched out plan of this lighthouse. This is the Latimer Reef Lighthouse. It's the lighthouse that we see as we're going off on an adventure. And of course, it's the last lighthouse we see that sig and it signals that we're almost home. So I would love to have that hanging on my tree. And so the first thing I need to do is figure out how to use my new circle cutter. This arrived while I was making the ornament with all the little green trees. Right in the middle, the UPS person came and dropped off my order from glass underground. And so here it is. And it is another tool to make my life easier that I will have to master. And I've discovered that some of these tools that are supposed to make your life easier don't really make my life easier at all. Okay, first step is to make sure. Nice flat surface. I need something a little bit grippy, so I put a paper towel down underneath the tacta. I need to make sure this thing is centered so that it will be on the glass the whole way. I have to make sure that it's not going to hit the wall. Yikes. Alrighty. And then we need to lift up this little handle and then push it into place so that it suctions onto the glass. Push down on the button and do a nice even score and don't overlap. Maybe easier said than done, we shall see. Well, actually that was pretty easy. So the next thing you need to do is flip it over and then press along the score so that it runs. And I'm thinking I need something thicker underneath this because it's not really doing much. So let me get a couple layers of paper toweling. So it'll give it more flex. And there's my Okay, it's doing nothing. Let me go back and read the directions and see what I'm doing wrong. It says pliable surface. Let's try a beach towel. Yep, still not doing a thing. So maybe I didn't do a deep enough score. Well, there's a little bit of a start of a run right there. Okay, I'm not seeing this is working. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. And then the next step is to make cuts and break off these other sections. But I think I'm gonna cut this section off first or I'll make my other circles first, not exactly sure. So far, this is a huge fail. Although I can use these pieces to do half snow globes, but I'm just, day one, not good. <sighs> so we'll keep at it, and hopefully soon I'll have circles to show for my efforts.
Oh, that didn't work at all. Okay, don't press so hard. Seems if I tap all the way around it, it starts to run. So the final result of my circle cutting adventure, I ended up with quite a few of them. Um, I do have a lot of scrap, which is fine because I'm going to start um, using some of some of the molds that I bought. And once you are done with putting the colored frit and powder in, you cover it with a layer of tecta. So the fact that I have scrap is not a problem. The reason I originally started cutting circles was to do a freeze and fuse of a deer in the forest. And I discovered that the circles that I was going to use were actually way too small, the deer was too big. So that's why I cut the bigger circles. And while I was plotting and planning my freeze and fuse, I thought about Latimer Light, which I absolutely love. So here's a just a photocopy of it. And now I have to decide if I want the larger circle, and that would give a lot more of the background sky and sea, or the smaller circle so it would focus more on the lighthouse. I'm leaning toward the smaller circle. So that's up next. Create an ornament of the Latimer Reef light. Got the basic pieces cut out. Now I have to clean them up and maybe do a couple of little nips to get them into the right shape and then I'll start gluing them down. I'm not sure what I'm going to use for the railings yet. I think the stringers whoops, are a little bit thick so I'll have to think about that for a bit and then I'll start up again. I think I'm going to have to let this dry before I try to start building the background because every time I touch it, it goes crooked. And there's so many little tiny pieces already that I think I'll just let that dry for a while and then I will go back with powders and frits to make the sky, the rocky area underneath the lighthouse, and then the water. But so far, it's working out pretty well. These are the possible colors I'm going to use because I want to make it look like New England. So I've got turquoise blue in here, uh, it probably would be for the sky, certainly not for the water. The reason I have so many different frits is because our glass supplies has a frit sampler pack. Reasonably priced, I'll buy it when it's on sale and they give you a huge amount. I think it's 25 different samples per kit. And there are three kits. The two of them have 25 and the third kit has 10. So I ended up with 60 different types of frit. And of course, because it was on sale, it was fairly reasonable. So the sky, again, I'm trying to mimic New England, not the Caribbean. So I'm going with light sky blue, possibly French vanilla, translucent white, or dense white, powder blue, light sky blue. The turquoise might be a little bit of highlight in the sky. Probably I will get rid of that one. The water, I've got deep cobalt, steel blue, midnight blue, and I've got steel blue in both powder and frit. I might throw in a little bit of sky blue. We'll see. For the stones and base of the lighthouse, I have a lot of different options, and I'm not sure which ones I'm actually going to go with. But I've got woodland brown, olive green, stiff black, charcoal gray, light bronze, Oregon gray. And again, these are not frits that you know, I'm designing and I'm going out to buy the frit. 
that would match the project I have in mind, it, I take the project in mind and then I go to the sample kit and see what I have that's close to what I want. Like I said, I'm probably not going to use all these different colors. So when it gets down to the end and I am finished with the piece, I'll put in the description which ones I actually used. Because I've got so many different things and I'm not sure how they're gonna fire, I'm actually gonna make a little test grid. Yes, I'm using a lot of my sacred black stringers, which I probably shouldn't because I don't have nearly enough as it is, but I'm going to do it anyway because I need to see how these are going to look. And I have my dogs helping me today. Wow, that is such a wonderful thing, I say sarcastically. I'm just going to make a little grid with stringers and then throw the samples in the exact order that I have them here. So we'll have four, 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 three, three, and then I can fire them and get a good look at the, what they're gonna be like fired. And then I'll ha have a better idea of how I'm gonna put together the sky and the sea. I'm glad I did a pre-fire. It really helps when deciding. And the only one that was a complete surprise was the steel blue frit. I guess the powder as well. When you fire them, they look metallic. And in they go for a tack and fuse. They are out of the kiln. And I'll post the video on how to do this one next. <laughs> 